Hey guys, welcome back to another live stream. We are developing a game in Unreal Engine 4 using C++, Blueprints, and the gameplay ability system uh, from scratch. Uh, so last time we were working on applying damage with a custom function uh, in our hero static library uh, called uh, hero applied damage. And we can see that take place in our actor in here. So we have hero apply damage and it applies five damage. And we have options to toggle for damage over time or not, which is cool. And you know, we run in and we can apply damage. And our health updates and everything is pretty good. And uh, last time we were discussing a uh, possibility for an inventory system. Uh, so that's something I want to go ahead and work on this time. It's going to be a lot of work. I don't think we're going to get all of it done today, but we're going to get something done. Um, we're going to start with this checklist. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. Uh, so we got to create an item class. And I don't know how, what the best method would be. Like, is, you know, we create an item class and then we uh, extend from that class, like, for armor pieces like helmet chest armor leg plates or what have you and then extend from item again for weapons uh later on um so you can have a sword sword shield two-handed weapon and something like that and then you know extend again from item to or have, i guess have like an item item class <laughs> where you can have your potions, you can have, uh, you know, it's things that regenerate mana, maybe something that boosts your attributes for a couple seconds, uh, stuff like that. Um, maybe we'll call it like uh, potions or something. So item, I think item will be our base class that we should extend from. And there's questions about how it should like in my head there's questions like okay so there should be like a physical representation of this object right and it should be in the world like some somebody drops something or you find it you find it in the world right you pick it up and then you then you put it on uh via your uh, inventory right instead of like for example or it could be like okay I walk over an item, like a helmet, and I currently don't have a, a helmet equipped, so it will automatically equip for me. Or maybe that should be like a, a gameplay setting, right? Like auto-equip when slot is empty, or just you know auto-equip better gear, and we would have to determine uh, what we would think is better gear, right? Maybe we would have to have like different levels of gear, so it's like, okay, this one is common, this one is uh, uncommon, uh, epic, legendary, god-like, you know. So that's something else that we would need to consider. Um, maybe we can think of, add that to the list. Uh, consider level, uh, consider gear level plus rarity. Um, yeah, I, I took off slack. Okay, sorry, I got, <laughs> I got distracted. I got something from work, sorry. So, sorry, work got me sidetracked. Um, so those are all the things that we need to consider. Like also, um, eventually, uh, like icon representation, like UI, all that jazz. Um, so I think, I think the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, let's create a potion. Uh, a health potion and this health potion obviously will heal us for
for a certain amount that we can determine. Um, and then uh, we'll see if it works. It would be something we can uh, drop into the world, pick up, and it will just heal us, right? And then maybe once we get that working, we can uh, we can extend that so that when you pick it up, um, it goes into your inventory. And uh, you can open up your inventory, you can click on it, and then it will heal you kind of thing. So that's, that's the goal, <laughs> I think. Let's make a potion, and we'll see if we can pick it up, right? Um, so I ha should have Unreal open, yeah. So, uh, let's create a new class. It's going to be of type actor. Uh, we'll do item. Uh, we'll do hero item base, right? That sounds good. So let's create that class, and it's gonna uh, compile and take its time. Uh, in the meantime, sorry, I gotta check some more stuff. Hopefully this compiles successfully. Sometimes it doesn't, it confuses me too. <laughs> but we should be okay. Ba -ba -ba. Still compiling, okay. Do, do, do. Who doesn't enjoy a good compile sesh? Ugh, work is, mm. work is tiring. <laughs> but you gotta do what you gotta do. Probably go stream for a couple hours and then get back to work for like another hour just to check stuff and then go to bed. Really don't enjoy how long this takes. There you go. Yes, reload all, stop debugging, that's fine. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's switch to code. So here's our item base, right? Um, I think by default, we don't want this to tick. Let's not worry about that. We'll keep, we'll keep tick as a function in case we do want to bring it back. Um, Actually, we can get rid of tick. I don't want tick. So, um, the first thing I want to do. So we need we need two things. Uh, we need. Uh, I guess can it be? I guess I'll be public. I'll just put public for now. Um, U property, uh, edit, edit anywhere. So we're going to need a, a static mesh property. Uh, so we could do what? U static mesh. Item, item mesh. I think that's all we have to do, right? What's the problem? 
I think that's all we have to do. I, I haven't had Ellie spawn something in a while, so I'm probably going to be wrong. And then we need another U property. Edit anywhere, I guess. I got to learn what those macro parts really mean. Not the U property, these, uh, whatever you would call these parameters. Um, U sphere component. Uh, call this uh, item collision. Oh yeah, we gotta do class. There. There we go. Um. Now got to initialize them right and I think I need to include them so item mesh equals uh, what's that function called uh, create def default sub object you uh, static mesh and text item mesh I think that's right all right expected let me let's research what that is I haven't had to write that in a while UE4 create default sub object oops Let's see if they give us syntax in this post. Um, okay, so I think I need, okay, so the error went away. So, okay, fine, I'll accept that. And then can I say item mesh equals root, root component or? I just say that? No. What's wrong with this? Oh, I gotta include static mesh. Let's so find the include. UE4 uh, static mesh include C++. Zoom in for you guys. That's what we're looking for. Grab that. We go back to our scene. Or not scene, our code. Oops, drop it in like so. I'm hoping IntelliSense will catch up because that should be right. What's wrong? I don't like that you don't know what that is. Hash include uh, engine. So you don't even know engine. Oh boy. Okay, do you have runtime? No, source. Why is it going there? So hero. Okay, do I have to do like this? Like engine. That's kind of annoying. Okay. Is it okay with that? No. <laughs> uh. Of course not. Um, let's copy full path. What's the full path? Okay. Okay, can you do it now? 
now. What is it after runtime engine? Classes engine static mesh. Okay, so I think it likes that. I don't understand, whatever. So we're under item here. Whoops. Okay, so we brought in static mesh, but it still doesn't like that. Thought it would. Let's figure out why. UE4, C++, make new root. Let's see if this will help us. Okay, there's some info in here somewhere. Okay, set up attachment. Oh, okay. Stop doing equals. Uh, is there a root? No. Uh, I guess we can do set up attachment. Let me bring us back to so you can see what I'm doing. Set up attachment. Okay, this might be outdated. Hmm. I wish I knew. Okay, UE4, C++, attach to root. Um. I guess that'll be a good reference point. Let's look at our character, hero character. Does it do anything? What is the reference? What does it go to? A character? Let's see what A character does. We gotta check a million things because I forgot how to do it. Oh boy. Okay, there is a function called set root component though, based on what I'm seeing here. So can I literally just do set root component item mesh? I feel like that's not true because I'm including it. Um, let's also. Uh, what's the, let's also just uh, initialize our component, our uh, collision component. Collision equals create default sub object, use sphere component, text, item collision. And we also need to include that bad boy. Let's see. Where can I find this? Um, okay, let's look it up. Before C plus use your component. Boom. Okay, it's pretty much pretty close to the uh, where the static mesh component is. So let's copy and paste that. And then components. Uh, and sphere component dot h. Can we make the item collision in this? Hmm, okay. I guess we can make the collision the root component. But at this point, we should be uh, pretty okay. I don't think I have any actors. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to open anything. Let's 
So I think we can just do, I think we're good here. I think we can po compile this and at least take a look. Because I'm also not sure exactly how armor's going to be intended to work. Like, is ar armor's going to have to be skeletal meshes? I guess they would. If they have to attach the body. So having a static mesh component in the base item class may not be the best. But let's go ahead and just see what we have, right? Uh, hero, and then we can just do items. And potions. Whoops. Create a new blueprint. Hero item base, yeah. Okay, so hero item base, I think, is going to be an uh, an asset we're going to be doing a lot. So let's add that to our um, what's the word? Let's add it to our config so it will appear in the editor for us. Let's close that out. Go in here. Uh, hero dev and then hero config. I think it's engine. No. Editor. Yeah. We can add this. Uh, this should be a uh, hero item base. We're good to go, hopefully. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of all this crap we don't need. Let's reopen and relaunch the editor. Now we should be able to see blueprint class. Here we go, hero item base. I should add a comment also in our code, but we'll do that in a second. So we can do, uh, let's see. H item, uh, health potion. So we have that. Okay, so we don't have, so here's our item mesh. But it's in our defaults. Does it show up if we do anything? No. So we did not initialize that correctly. So that's fun. So we gotta fix that first, okay? Uh, whoops. We don't need that right now. Um, maybe four C plus plus. Initialize static mesh component. Let's see. I completely forgot how to do this. Um, okay, so there, maybe we have to set up the attachment. Let's see. Let's uh, see. Um, okay, can we do something like this? Uh, item mesh. Set up attachment. So why is that wrong? Um, okay, so that was not what I wanted. Okay, create static mesh in C++. So visible anywhere, maybe that's the problem. Visible anywhere. Let's do the same for our sphere component. And then create default sub object. So is it, oh, is it a problem that it's not a mesh component? It's probably it. Mm. 
there. I'm assuming it'll be in a similar directory here. Okay, can I get some help here? Runtime, engine, classes, components, uh, static, mesh component. Okay, you should be happy. I don't understand why you're not. Okay, let's just see if this compiles. Then we'll deal with the errors. Yeah, we're good. Okay, let me bring us back so you can see. So here's our item. Uh, don't see it. I think it's because I have to recreate the, uh, I think maybe if I reparent it, file, reparent, um, actor, yeah. Save and then reparent it back. Uh, hero item base. Yes, there we go. Sometimes if you see that, you'll have to just refresh it like that. So we're good, we can add a mesh. A cube, boom, there's a cube. Wham, bam, okay. Um, let's add a quick comment into our class. Thank you for this resource. Give me, making me realize I had to do static mesh components that have static mesh. Um, so we have hero gameplay effect has a good comment, so we can just copy this. I had a base. Go here. Uh, the hero. I am base. Right, let's just fucking get rid of the rest of this comment. The hero item base <clears throat> is the base class in which all items in hero are uh, extend from. Um, this class should not be used however it's children classes should be used when creating blueprints. Okay. So I think we're good there. <clears throat> Let's just make sure that's A-OK. -okay. Now, if we go to Blueprint, let me bring us back. Now, if you right click, Blueprint, uh, zoom in. I, I can't really zoom in, but you'll see here item base here. We got the comment there, so we know that works. Uh, so, next, we got to set up the event for our sphere overlap component. So, UE4, C, sphere component. Uh, begin overlap signature. I always forget what the signature is. Um, here's the header file. We can just take this. I think this can be, yeah, private. Uh, I guess these all could be private. Uh, let me, sorry. Uh, 
These all can be private, I think. We could just yoink that. Um, I don't need that. Uh, void, overlap component. Just for clarity, let's just do something like that. And then, bam. So we have that, and then we do have to... Uh, we have to, where is it? All right, first let's add it, right? But now we can do this. We could do item collision on component begin overlap dot add dynamic this uh, act hero is it yeah, I think we did the a hero item base on no on overlap begin okay so now what we can do is we can take uh let's do i think we have to i think we have to bring in our character hold on uh include oops a hero character i think yeah it could just be hero character right i think we could do something like that so we could do a hero character uh character equals Cast a hero character, uh, other actor, and then we could do an if character, we could do a log. So we could just say, hey, if this character is valid, let's just UE log this bad boy. Log temp, warning, text. Valid overlap. So that should be enough to where we can overlap our actor. Sorry, I'm so tired. Okay. Let's go back to the editor. So now, in theory, let's go ahead and let's just, we have, we have a cube. We could just make the radius a little bigger, a lot bigger. So we have something like that. Um, we'll have to probably default some things, but I think for now that's A-OK. -okay. So it blocks hero character. So we don't want to do that because I believe if we bring this into the world, OK, some, for some reason, it's that mesh is not visible. Let's say show collision. Oops. Like it should just, yeah, see it's blocking us like, uh. But I'm concerned for a couple things. Why is this mesh not visible? Visible, hidden game. Let's look at the component. Maybe it's because it's not attached. Yeah. That's probably why. So let's set up the attachment. Uh, 
Uh, item mesh. Oh, sorry, let me bring you guys back. So item mesh, uh, set up attachment. Item collision. I think that's enough. Let's just see if that works. go so we can nuke that so we fixed that problem again sorry let me show you so we're able to bring this mesh or this actor into the world and there you go still the issue is going to be with our collision um i forget how to update the collision uh ue4 c plus plus um, update collision. I guess I can actually do it in the editor, right? I think in our project settings we can do this pretty easily. Um, project settings. Doo -doo -doo. And then collision. Overlap all. Okay, here we go. Good. Overlap all dynamic. Also gets to our hero. Ignore only player pawn. We'll want that to be our character. Overlap only pawn. We'll want to do something like that. Pawn. Yeah, that's good. Character mesh, that, invisible wall, yeah, invisible wall dynamic, yeah. Trigger, we'll do something like that. Okay, I think that's all good. I think, I don't know, does it, I don't know if it requires a restart. Oh, what up, Sandra? No worries. Uh, 40 minutes of a call? What kind of phone call was that? Was it work? Oops, I hit my mic. Uh, just uh, since you missed 40 minutes, uh, what we're doing is we're starting to create our first uh, item. We're going to make, uh... oh, okay, so a friend and your dad. Well, it's good you're keeping touch with a lot of people. I usually have like five-minute phone calls once a week with my parents, and we don't talk about anything. Uh, just to catch you up, we're working on a health potion item. We created an item base class, and we're just testing things out. And eventually, we'll want to extend this item base class to like potions and maybe extend even further for a health potion, but we can just do potion. And we can make the assumption that potions will either negatively or positively affect a specific stat, and that's it. Whereas we can then extend the hero item base to like armor pieces and weapons, and that could do much more. But we're going to start off with potions. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to start with. <laughs> so uh, right now, uh, I updated collision in our project settings. Yeah, uh, so... It's gonna be easy. It's gonna, it literally is just an event in our in a sphere component where you overlap it and you'll pick it up, quote unquote. Because what I want to do first, I don't know if you'll agree with this, but first I'm gonna uh, make sure I can overlap with it, and I'm gonna make sure it, it heals me, like when I pick it up. And if we know that's working, uh, then I can try to create. Uh, an actual inventory component on my character and maybe in that inventory component when you pick up an item it will store that item and that item can be represented in you in the ui so yeah it'll destroy the med well that's what we'll want it to do 
like my, I think my end goal is to do what I just said, where you pick up the item, it destroys the mesh, it stores the data of what you just picked up and puts it into the inventory system component. And this inventory system component then, when needed, uh, for the UI, you know, calls, you know, what, you're, what it needs, you know, just display it. And then when you click it, it will, you know, perform some specific actions or something. So we'll have, we'll have to just kind of see. <laughs> Um, so first things first, I'm the realist, but then let's just check if our collision's updated. So item mesh, no, collision, overlap. Yes, it already automatically overlapped. Um, that seems rather complex, so you can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be a pain, I'm sure. <laughs> and we're all going to just do it for this one potion. And then once we can get the potion going, we can create, uh, we can figure out how to do the armor pieces and then kind of just go from there. So uh, what I'm expecting to happen is uh, a print in our output log when I overlap this thing. And we got it. So valid overlap, you'll see, I don't know if you can't really see it too well, but it's right there. Valid overlap, boom, bada bing. So we know this overlap uh, function is working. Uh, so now here is the question. Uh, I guess I should, let me reopen Unreal again. So kind of like how we do with damage. Maybe there should be like uh, a generic gameplay effect for add health with its own tag, right? I think that would make the most sense. Uh, so that's damage, data asset. Uh, so gameplay effects, here we go. So damage, we have that. We can make a new one called uh, health or health potion. Let's do potion. Okay, there we go. And let's make a new folder for health potion. And then we can create a new gameplay effect. HGE for hero gameplay effect, um, health, potion, base. Or we'll just do health potion. And then what can we do? Uh, it's going to be, what would be, I think damage, I believe, was instant, right? Well, not the damage over time, but the base one, right? Yeah, it was instant. So I think we could do something like instant, and then we could do modifier, and then uh, health, and then, yeah, we could do set by caller, the data tag, we could do Uh, so there's a data set already here. Uh, so data, we could do data dot health. Data dot health potion. And does the damage do anything else? It doesn't apply anything, right? So I think that is enough. So now, um, what's the best thing to do? Um, I think the best thing to do is to create a gameplay effect parameter in our object where we can place our gameplay effect for our health potion. So I think that's the way to go. We can maybe reevaluate over time. So let's go back to code. All right, we can comment this out. We don't need it anymore. Um, let's go into our dot .h. Um, 
let's put it under public access modifier. We can do you property visible anywhere. And we could just do what class uh, the gameplay effect. Um, let me look at our data asset uh, hero. Ah, it's got to be a subclass. Okay, let's just copy this. Um, and then we could do uh, potion effect, health potion effect, I guess. Uh, do I need to include anything? Yeah. Or no. I don't know if I need to. All right, let's go ahead and just include this. It shouldn't need it. Okay, it doesn't need it. Okay, great. Um, so now we should reference our uh, statics. So function library or static. We're going to have to copy some stuff. We're going to have to do something like this, right? So let me just kind of diarrhea this over here. We'll look, kind of look at it as it goes. So if character, then we can do another if. Now if health potion effect. Now let's see what we gotta do. Uh, we don't need this damage tag just yet. Um, We don't need this stuff. Then we need the rest. Um, and I think we need to include probably, let's just include all this crap. Would it work to put in the damage over time, but invert? Um, yeah, probably. Um, I think it would, but I kind of want to keep damage as damage and health as health. I don't want to have to figure out why something's positive, why something's negative using that same tag and everything. But technically, it should work. Okay, so request tag, it was data.health potion. And then set, um, I guess that should be a, a value. I think eventually it should be like a data table value. So like at certain levels, these potions heal you for more. I think for now, let's just put a hard code. This is five. And then, okay, so now what we can do is, um, I think we could just do, what is it? Okay, let's just do that. Oops. It's inaccessible. Why? So a hero character. Okay, does it? No, it's right here. Okay, get ability system component. Okay. Let's do something like this. Um, uh, is it you? Ability system component. 
ability system component uh, okay character ASC equals that bam no now I gotta do this Whoops. and then we could just dump this in there and this in there And then make outgoing spec we can do with this. And I think that's all happy. And then in the end, we can just call the destroy. <laughs> and I think that should compile. Okay. So this will this um sorry, let me bring you over. So now I should have I'll do damage, five damage, so I know this will heal me by five. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to deal damage, 5, and then should I heal? Okay. <laughs> Didn't really heal. <laughs> so. Um. Let's see. Oh, I didn't put my potion effect in. Ha. Ha ha. Potion. Health potion. There we go. All right. Let's try that again. And there we go. And we already have we already have clamping uh, already done, so that if I were to make uh, so instead of this value being five in code. Let's say, for example, we were to make it like, I don't know, like a thousand. Uh, there's already clamping done within the attribute that will prevent that value to go over the max health, which is 100 at the moment. So I'll show you some interesting examples of how this is working. Excuse me. I had lasagna for dinner. And I got my new phone today. Nice and I got my Lord of the Rings background. I don't know how you can tell. It's so much better than my old one. Super happy. Okay, so back to where I was. Um so this should heal me for a thousand, right? So you know, I heal. I hurt myself. Um, whoops! I hurt myself for five, and then I pick this up. It still only gets me to a hundred because of clamping that occurs within the attributes. Um, but for example, if I were to set this to let's say five hundred, and I I created a cheat. I think it's yeah. Hero dot attribute set attribute. Uh, health, and we could just set it to, or no, max health. We'll set it to a thousand. So now, you know, I have a hundred out of a thousand. And if I heal, it brings me up to like a thousand. And I can get hit. All right, so it still does five. Why does this only do five? That's concerning. Am I hard coding it? Oh, I am hard. <laughs> Derp. So you mentioned that one control stream, something about it being a game where the character is aware that there is someone. 
something about it being a game where the character is aware that there's someone the player controls it. Be, uh, maybe. Like, I really don't know what kind of game I want to make. <laughs> I'm kind of just making things just to make it and hope that things kind of come together. Um, I do have one game idea, but I don't know how to even start making it. And I don't know, I don't think Unreal is the best option. I would imagine this game would be something in Game Maker or something. Because, like, I wanted to make a game where, um, like, you're a detective. But you're a detective, like, in a foreign country or an alien planet or something. And you don't understand the language. So you kind of have to go uh, either through body language uh, or slow, like, kind of like how... Um, no Man's Sky, the aliens in those stations slowly teach you their language. I would think it would be interesting to see if you can slowly learn this language. Oh, there was a game on GDC? Yo, fuck that. Damn it. <laughs> Maybe that's where I got the idea from and just didn't realize. If, send a link if you could find it. Um, but now this should be fixed. Uh, like 500? Yeah. Boom. Clamps it down to zero. So we know this potion is working. Um, I kind of want to see if we can make. Um, so it works. We apply it. We apply the health. Everything's well and dandy. Okay. Uh, what I want to see if I can do, like, because in health potions, we have like a, a modifier magnitude I kind of want to have a modifying magnitude thing like I want to do a, like a set scalable float I want to get this thing right here whoops you guys not on the same screen um, let me also make the text size bigger this is kind of hard for you guys Um, hold on, I'm just fixing yeah, Visual Studio. Okay, so that did not help you at all. So why did I do that? Text size. Okay, it doesn't even let me change it. Thanks. Can I do text size per screen? No. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so there's the scalable magnitude float that I have, and it lets you put in a value and also read from a data table. And I kind of want to do that. So I'll need to figure out where that parameter comes from. And I'll have to look in code. And it's in the gameplay effect class. Um, I don't know if I need gameplay effects types. Let me just clean this up. Do I need that? No, we definitely don't need damage data. Gameplay ability, I don't think we do. I think that's all we need. Let me just compile, I'll just see if we get any problems here. Okay, so we'll compile good so we don't need those. All right, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay. Um, let's go into, where is our gameplay effect class? So it extends from you gameplay effect. Gotta take its time to open. So I gotta figure out where in this huge fucking thing. Uh, let's find scalable float. Oh, I changed something in the code. It's got to recompile everything. Fuck. Let's 
find all. Okay, maybe we need this enum class. Don't know how valid that is. Um, let's see, what is it? Uh, so we definitely need gameplay effect, I'll say that much. Um, uh, enum, uh, where did they, did they name it a specific way? Uh, value, or, can I do something like that? No, I gotta make it a, variable uh, magnitude all right let's just say value uh, might have to include gameplay effect so I guess if we include gameplay let me see if this compiles without any problem because I think we'll need to com include gameplay effect okay so it compiled successfully but it's because we commented out that one line of code um how can I get this enumeration? I guess it's because I'm declaring it poorly. Maybe I don't think I need enum there. Can I just do something like that? Let's just see what happens. Okay, so I'm missing a type. I think it's because I need, all right, I definitely would need to have gameplay effects. So I think I could just cut it from here, put it in here. And then it should recognize it. Usually when you get that, uh, that, like the issue where it's like int assumed or whatever, that means you you need to include a class. Okay, this looks promising. Okay. Go into the Unreal for us. Um, ba, 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 ba. Uh, items, potions, health potion. Okay, so it's okay. I didn't make it a U property. Fuck my life. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let me just bring us back to code. Uh, category, we'll just say calculate, magnitude calculation. Let's see if that'll do the trick. Fingers crossed. Let's go into our potion. There we go. So we have it, but it doesn't extend the way I thought it would. Oh, is it gonna crash now? Cause like when we have gameplay effects. Oh, you found it, Sandra. Nice. 
Like when we have gameplay effects, you know, we do, you know, scalable float and it kind of updates, right? So I would like to know how to do that. Uh, hello then, Cryptor. How's it going? Um, so I guess I gotta look more into our the gameplay effect class. How the hell does it do that? Um, I don't need to save anything. Um, so it has this enumerator. Um, e attribute base float calculation type. No. I'm doing great preparing for my exams. What are you working on? Oh, well, yeah, the exams are always good. <laughs> uh, so I'm working on... I don't know exactly what I'm working on. I'm just trying to create, a, I guess, an RPG of some sort. So I'm not too sure what I want to do yet. Uh, but I do want to use... I'm using Unreal Engine 4, C++, and the gameplay ability system. So I'm just slowly trying to build an RPG from the ground up. Um slowly getting there and right now we're working on uh items so i'm working on a potion item which technically works right now i'm just trying to tweak it and get some parameters the way i want it to be and, and properties i should say within our actor and kind of just build it from there oh cool you, you installed it yesterday very nice i'm using unreal uh, i'm using the build from uh, GitHub, and I got it at 4.25.3, so that's the version I'm using. So, that's, I think we're all caught up. Um, so, calculate magnitude. Let me bring us back to the code. Let me just recalculate, let me uh, not calculate, recompile. Uh, I have a small question about Unreal Engine, but a silly one though. Yeah, ask anything you need. I've, I've asked my fair share of dumb questions. I'm not saying your question's gonna be dumb, but you know, I've had, uh, it, I'm going to end it there. <laughs> um, so scalable float magnitude. Where do we see that? Scalable float magnitude. Here we go. Um, do I have to do something like this maybe? Can you work with Unreal Engine on a MacBook? Um, I think you can. It's not gonna, depending on your MacBook, I don't think it's gonna run very well, but you definitely, I think you could. Um, you, I think the problem is if you wanna, like if you wanna use Unreal Engine without actually touching code or C++ or anything, I think it's easier to do it that way. Because uh, typically you would have to install certain libraries and stuff of Visual Studio and things like that uh, to get to actually run code. I forget what, uh, I forget what Mac has. I think they have some sort of IDE for coding. UE4 um, on MacBook. Let's see. So. So Apple cuts off Epic from its tools. I don't know if that's still true or not. Yeah, Xcode. So I don't know, you might need to download, like if you really just wanna you know, use Unreal Engine and just stick with blueprints for scripting, I don't think you need to worry about anything. I think it should be fine. I think the only time you might run into some hiccups is if you want to uh, run a C++ project because you might need to link in the correct, because it usually typically uses Visual Studio and stuff like that. Um, but let's see, according to Reddit, let's say Reddit's always right, I should say. Um, so if I'm going for pure blueprint, uh, blah, 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 then I submit a partition. 
Um, so you, I think you should be able to then, if if you have that to, uh, I have that too. I use Visual Studio. Like, I think you should be okay. I don't know how well it's gonna run, but it should at least run. That's my. I can't really say for certain. I I use I've always used Windows. I don't use anything from Apple. Um, okay. So I gotta figure out with this. Do I have to copy this? Uh, I got probably copy this struct. Okay. Oh, thanks for the follow then, Cryptor. I appreciate it. Um. Um. Maybe I can. Um. Yeah, scalable float magnitude. That's what I was looking for. Like, do I have to copy all of this to have that kind of functionality? Um, I don't know if I want that. So guess what happened? My phone died and now I don't know the pin. Oh fuck, that sucks, Sandra. <laughs> Sorry for laughing, but I, I, I laugh to cope in uncomfortable situations. Um, UE4, how to use struct from other classes? Let's see. Maybe I can just use the struct. What's the name of the struct? F game play effect modifier of magnitude. Let's see if that works. Oh, sorry. I always forget if I'm on code or not. So I'm hoping getting this struct will work. Like I would imagine there should be a simple way to have that kind of power and functionality, right? Because if this doesn't work, I'll research a little bit more, but in the end we might have to just for now do a, like a hard, not a hard value, but like a float or something. So in our uh, items, potions, health potion. Okay, so we do have something like that. Okay, perfect. So the next thing, how do we extrapolate the data? We, got, we must look into the code again. Um, and I think the dot H is not going to help us. We're going to need, um, we're going to need the CPP to get, to see how they extrapolate the data. Uh, open a containing folder. Uh, so it's in runtime. No. So plugins, runtime, gameplay abilities. So engine, plugins, runtime, gameplay abilities, source, I guess gameplay abilities again. And then it's going to be private. No, yes. Private's always the CPP. And then there should be a gameplay effect. That's CPP. Here we go. So let's see how do they? Okay, there's a lot of fucking code. <laughs> um, so that's the construction script. Post load. Post Malone. 
Um, post edit change. No, pre save. No. So is this the calculate? I mean, this looks promising. Um, uh, so base value can be calculated without evaluation parameters. All right, let's keep looking. F custom at calculated base float. Is this what it is? Um, no. That's attempting. Aha. This might be it. Um, so that looks promising, but that's a bool. Might want to look back at that. So this is attempting. No. No, no. So get custom magnitude calculation class, no. Serializing, no. Maybe this was just like a bad idea. <laughs> uh, no. Thank God I don't need my sim to use Instagram, yeah. So did you figure out your pin? So this is all spec shit. Three times no. D -d 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 Denied. Um, hmm. Is there a apply? No. I don't want selection. Current document. Apply. All right. Okay. Let's see what we have under apply. Now, does it say for how long it's locked? Is it forever? Uh, apply mod to attribute. I think this might be what we want. I need a code from a card I threw away. <laughs> oh my god. That sucks. Um let's see. Okay, there was one that I saw towards the top. No, I don't. Ha I don't think I have a sim. Pin. If I do have a sim pin, then I definitely don't know what it is. All right, 
Let's grab this fucking thing. Um. Christoph says, that happened to me too, but luckily I had the card. Mm. Lucky you, Chrissy boy. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I barely, I rarely, rarely plan ahead when it comes to those things. Sometimes I just toss shit out. So that's a spec. Um, that's, I don't think that's what I need. I think I need more. Let me look at this struct. Oh, uh, no. Gameplay effect dot H. So we have this entire struct. And it comes with these functions. Attempts to calculate the magnitude given the provided spec. That gets calculation type. Um, okay, maybe I can get that from here. So get scalable float magnitude. I don't know how good this is going to be. Um, can I do something like... Um, like value... dot float... So it's inaccessible. Because it's protected. Fuck! How does it get this value then? Um. Can I make myself like a friend class? Uh, friend class gameplay effect. Is that cool? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, float la equals that. No. It'd be cool if it gave me what the error was. Just had it. So 
So it still is inaccessible. Hmm. Um. Okay. I don't know what the context string means. But this might be something we need. Let me just throw it down here. That's it. Current document, come on. So it's serializing. Uh, report errors. Post load. Attempt to calculate magnitude. Okay. That's really it. That's all they get me. Um, so I, maybe I'm just going about this just the wrong way. Um, Yeah, maybe I am just going about this the wrong way. Um, what do I have access to? If I do something like, oh, no, no. Um, can I do... the error inaccessible um uh, let's see yeah with this health potion effect Do I want to set it by caller or do I want to have a data asset? No, like a data table for it. Um, we might also have to look into leveling. <laughs> so, uh, Let's add that to the fucking list. Um, character leveling. Join labels code. List to do. Um, add player level attribute and figure out leveling with gameplay ability system. Passing in level in gameplay effects. Yeah, there's a bunch we have to figure out there. Cause like what I guess what I'll need to do. Cause like for example, if if you're like if you're level one, level one and you have a hundred health, you should, like I want this potion to heal you. You know, t 
10 health points, right? Or 50. But if you're level two, maybe it does 55 or something. So I kind of want to have it grow with like some sort of formula we can determine later. Um, so I think I might want to do that. Yeah, like levels and level curves and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'll need to research how to do that. Put that to there. Research level curves. Um, but we did get the potion technically working. Um, I don't know if we want to, we'll eventually need to get a mesh. I don't know if we want to worry about that right now. Um, trying to think how this should work. Um, like I'm thinking uh, for health, for example, like this hard-coded 1000. Should I literally have like the gameplay effect pull in this data value from this table instead of relying on just a tag. It'll just work. But if I, what if I wanted to make like a, yeah, delete system 32, solid, solid idea. I'm doing it now. Because like with these gameplay effects, you know, you have options. Like you have modifiers, obviously. And right now I have set by caller, but like, what if I want? What should? What if I should do something like this, where like, you know, I could have like a new curve table at level one. It does this. Level two does that. And this would always have to be one. But like, is there a way to maybe? set the float scalar magnitude if I wanted to make like a super strong potion or should the super strong potion be its own gameplay effect and maybe its own thing on the curve maybe that should be really how it is so I'm only gonna stream for maybe like 15 more minutes let's try to get a, a curve going so we can create a curve. Um, I already have one in my Google Drive. <laughs> Chris Shop, you gotta stop taking a shit, dude. So we already have uh, an example of this in our Google Drive. Christoph, I don't care if you are peeing. I know you're pro you you always be taking a shit. So we already have one called hero initialization, right? Um, where do I keep this? Is there a folder? Yeah, hero game development attributes, hero ability values. Let's just do uh, item values. Um, can we, is it, no, we gotta do the attributes. Let's make a, let's make a copy. And can I just like move this? Uh, move, rename, uh, hero item values. And I think it has to be something like zero, one, or can we start at one? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. So as an example, nuke that, nuke all that, um, and then maybe, let's see, uh, hero dot health potion dot base, and we'll say at level one it does ten. Level 2, 30, 40, 50. And we'll, do, we'll do something like this for now. Eventually, we might want to develop some sort of, what's the word, formula. And, you know, we can use that formula later. But for now, um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, let me go ahead. Let's download this as a CSV. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, D drive, hero, hero data tables. Hero item values. Oh, I guess I don't have to I can give these spaces. Let me call this. Oh God! <laughs> there we go. Hero item values. Save. Now we can go back into our editor. Now, data tables, hero item values, we can import. Um, I don't know what kind I need it to be. Which one is, uh, so it's straight up curve table, right? So this is attribute metadata. This is a curve. Uh, import. And this is a curve table. Uh, I don't know, linear. Okay. And this one, yeah, there we go. So let's see if this came in correctly. Yeah. You want linear because otherwise the value could be off at the points. Yeah. Uh, sir, wait, did I choose linear? <laughs> All right, let me just fucking delete it and do it again. Linear. Yeah, I think I did linear, but okay, <laughs> I forget. Save, okay. So we have that. And we can go into our gameplay effect. And we could do hero item values and hero health potion base, right? But we gotta figure out how to. So, okay, so this is where we do. I think this is where we put, we pass in. Um, Hold on, this is in the code. So this this one value, uh, that is the level. So if, if we were to make this in theory, let's see if this will work. Um, we'll make this level two. 
We don't need this anymore. And I think I can maybe just do something like this. I cut out the middleman. Let's see if that compiles. Okay, it does. So since we're passing in two, that should be 20 points of health. So we have our health potion. It's using this gameplay effect. We're going to have to get rid of this calculation class. We don't need it. So let me deal 20 points of damage, and we'll see if it heals me to that value. So at minus 20 and 20. Yes. So that parameter is what we think it is. Um, let me show you guys. Sorry, I was on the other screen. So I go into my damage volume. I get dealt 20 damage. And then I pick up my health and I get restored 20. So that's working. So now we gotta worry about um, hmm. we gotta worry about uh, levels now. So I think that's what we're going to do next time. We'll create the uh, level attribute. So character leveling, so add player level attribute, figure all that stuff out. We can do that all next time. Uh, for now, let me just clean up some shit. So again, this is all being done in hero item base. I want to make sure... Um, um, I don't think it has an experience system. Uh, but what you can probably do is, you know, make experience points an attribute. And, you know, you'll make an attribute for current experience and then maybe, like, required experience or something like that. Um, I wonder if I can show you that, um, that project. Because there's a good Tranic documentation project that I have. Maybe we can see how he does it. Um. Yeah, like it would literally just have to be like a float attribute that you have to track and, you know, gaining experiences, you know, through X, Y, and Z. And, you know, once you reach the cap, Level up, do what you got to do, blah, blah, blah. So here's this documentation. Can I just run it? Do I have to, do I have to do anything? I do have to rebuild. Why? Well, that is a good question. We're going to have to also <laughs> figure out fucking experience. But for, I, I think we're going to do that later. I think I, I want to make an attribute. Because uh, I did make a cheat where I can set attribute values and it'll just work. Um, so I'll just be like, okay, you know, set this attribute to level four. I'm, I'm, I'm level four now. And see how different things behave from there. But yeah, I want to check out this reference real quick. See how he does experience. Uh, let me close out of our project because we're done for tonight. Um, there we go. Wonder if, can you guys hear the Polish Spotify advertisements? <laughs> okay. So 
we have this Tradic pro project. I made it an int because that made more sense. I have current XP and XP till. Yeah, you're right. Integer just makes sense. I, I, I had float on the mind, I suppose. So let's see uh, how this game works. So, uh, yeah, it has gold and XP. So I got one XP. Got two XP. I'm getting all the stuff. Got more XP. Then he has uh, R for a meteor. Get wrecked. They're stunned. There's cooldowns. Stuff what we might need to look into later. But yeah, so this has an XP system in it. So let's see what he does. Because I th yeah, I think because because of the gameplay ability system, uh, attributes have to be float values. They can't be integers. So I think that's why I said float. But I guess in your case, it can be an integer because you're doing your own system. Um, so we have here's the attribute set. Um, so we should have experience. Yeah. So he calls it XP. And uh, a points awarded to the killer character's killers. Okay. So used to level up. It's not implemented in the project, but he does have that. So that's what we would have to do. Um, add attributes for experience. Uh, but we'll add that later, much, much, much later. Because um, maybe uh, maybe we would want to, you know, at certain levels, unlock certain new abilities or something like that at certain levels, right? So we would have to figure that out. But that's another time. So in the next, uh, next stream, uh, we'll create the level attribute. And we'll just make sure we we're able to pass that level attribute into our gameplay effects. And then uh, we'll continue. We'll have to refactor the item set base because uh, we, we did too much because in that one class. Can't wait to show you my stuff, by the way. It has some attempts at these kind of stuff. Like it has XP and some spells, but I'll need a refactor. Yeah, I'm excited to see that too, Kristoff. Um, I, I, you definitely know what you're doing, so I'm curious to see how it all turns out, or at least what you have so far. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's do our usual end of stream cleanup. Go to Perforce. So we have, I think that's everything that we changed. We didn't do anything in abilities, uh, nothing in attributes, right? No. Nothing in the movement component, nothing cheat, nothing in components. We're going to have to add an inventory one eventually. Uh, nothing in damage, nothing in data, uh, nothing in statics, nothing in game mode, gameplay ability, no. Gameplay effect, no. HUD, we do stuff stuff in item, but that's set already. Uh, here we go, character.h, check out. Nothing else. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, so whip, item... Whip items, uh, potion, basic potion, plus new item, data table. I think that's enough. So we submit. We're good with Perforce. Oops, I don't need help. Now it should be in our game sync. Right there, good. We can sync to that later. Then we also have GitHub. So we don't need these uh, projects. Uh, let's see, item system. 
we can commit to GitHub. And anyone who is watching, um, please join Discord if you're interested. Um, I guess that fucking command doesn't work. There we go. Join Discord if you want. Uh, there we, we talk about this project. We have just general questions and answers and topics about game development, everything like that. Um, if you want access to the source code, you can become a Patreon. So if you want to support that way, go ahead. Um, also, uh, all these live streams and potential tutorials, they go on my YouTube channel. So if you aren't there already, uh, follow me on uh, YouTube. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, so, Christoph, thanks for watching. Sandra, thanks for watching. Everybody else, Billy, thank you for watching. Um, and we'll stream again on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, uh, me and Billy, I believe we're going to be playing some Pokemon. Um, it, that may, it, it'll either be Pokemon or it'll be World of Warcraft. Uh, so, see you guys soon. Mwah! Bye!